doe, a deer, oh, that a one. female deer, yeah. ray, a drop of golden sun. Yeah, me, my name, I call no, myself. A name, I call oh, myself. Oh, okay. I was close. Fa. I don't know. A long, long way to <laughs> run. <laughs> you can tell you're the musical so, man. I don't know. Drop a golden sun. Did we already do that part? <laughs> a needle yeah. pulling there thread. Man. La. A note to follow so. T. A name I call myself. <laughs> <laughs> a drink with jam and bread. Uh, that will bring us back to. Dough. I did yeah, it. Yeah. I did there it. There you go. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the inaugural podcast episode of There Is No Crying in Podcasting. Hell I am your yeah. host, Johnny Blackburn, and along here with me is my co-host... Nick Alessandro. Nick Alessandro. <laughs> At some point in post, <laughs> I'm going to have <laughs> Gary... <laughs> 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 I'm going to let Gary add the... I'm going to let him edit those special effects in. Gary, do you want to do that? Sure. Yeah. He loves it. Wow. Uh, he was really wow. excited about that. He was that. way more excited yeah. than I thought he was he going was to be. He was pumped. He was really pumped. Yeah. I am actually... Wow. That'd be awesome, you know? Get him yeah. some sports effects, you know? Baseball sounds. Yeah. Basketball sounds. It, tons of basketball sounds. Yeah. Gary, what is your favorite sport? Golf. Golf. Well, golf is... A, a sport. sport. No, it's a sport. It's a sport that, you know, fat people can play. Yeah. You know, like I guess, they can, wrestling. Also, I guess they can also play baseball. Yeah. When David Ortiz is fat. Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder. Have you seen CeCe Sabathia? Yeah, that lately? man's huge. Did he retire? Yeah, he retired this year. He did. Or last year, I guess, yeah. technically. There is no this year. How long had that guy played for? A long time. Because he played for the Brewers before he played for the Yankees for like a decade, right? Yes. Or the Twins. I think, no, I think he played for... He played for the Mariners. Did he? Okay. I believe it was the Mariners. No. You're the baseball guy. I'll take yeah. your word for it. Uh, hey, guys. So uh, for all of you out in podcast radio land, uh, Nick and I here have been talking for a very long time about doing a sports podcast. Because way too long. Way too long. And we're just tired of listening to all the crap that ESPN throws out there because only a few of them are really any good. Yeah. And if you don't like what I'm saying, then... Somebody from ESPN, put us on yeah, hire your us. network, Let's go. hire us, and we'll go head-to-head in a sports debate with any of your ex-athletes and current analysts. You know, I you would know? dream to debate Stephen A. Smith. I would love I would to debate love Stephen it. A. Smith. Could you, though? Would you oh. be able to debate the man? I don't he know. just he yells over just you. over me the whole time. He just shouts over. The like, entire time. Hang on! Hang on! <laughs> hang on! Let me tell you something! Let me tell you! You know, I, I don't understand how Skip Bayless was... And I'm not even a huge fan of Skip Bayless, but I... Oh, me neither. I'm I, a Cowboys fan. You can't be a fan of Skip Bayless. Yeah, I don't understand fan. how he was able to do a show with him for such a long time. I, I yeah. Mean, does it's he, funny. He's now moved on to Shannon Sharp, who does... The yeah. exact same it was thing. The exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> now here's the thing. I respect Shannon Sharp more because Shannon Sharp is a ex athlete yeah. and a two time Super Bowl winner. Yeah. And, and a Hall of Famer. Yeah, one of the greatest tight ends you know? to ever play the game. And I, I get it, Stephen A. Smith like like Skip Bayless or like a Buster Olney or whoever. They're yeah. journalists. I get it. They've followed it for years. Mm-hmm. We're the same way, you know, we played sports in school, but yeah. never at a professional level. No. Never. You know? Um so we can only comment on what we see. We don't actually know the inner workings of the actual professional level of Correct. any of the major sports. Yeah. So I, I just feel like with those guys, especially Stephen A, like he always plays devil's advocate just to play devil's advocate so he makes money. So he becomes this polarizing figure and oh, yeah. gets shows. Oh, yeah. He's always got to, you know, pick one of those hard topics and then go the opposite direction on purpose to try to get, you know, somebody upset. Every single I time. Feel, yeah, it's awful. Have you, have you ever seen an interview with him or any one of his shows... Or listen to one of his podcasts where he's not yelling. No. Or in a disagreement with somebody. Never. Anytime. I mean, he got a technical in the All-Star game. He did? I yeah. didn't hear about that one. When, when he was coaching. Oh, for the Celebrity All-Star game. Yeah, for the game. Celebrity oh, All-Star game. Okay. He got technical. I think he almost got thrown out. <laughs> I wish he did get thrown out. Yeah, it would have been interesting. I wish he did get thrown out. I think it was Stephen A. and Wilbon, weren't they the two coaches? Because the, the game was in Because the game was in Chicago. And you know Will Bond. Will Bond, Will Bond's he a bull. Love he, Chicago. Yeah, he's he's a he's he's a he's a he's a Chi Town boy. Yeah. I you see but see I love Michael Wilbon. Oh yeah, me too. I, I've always I've always respected him. PTI, whew, great yeah. show. Oh yeah. Great. He, love he it. and Kornheiser? Yeah. 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 Shout out to you guys. You guys want to come on and debate us or just be a guest? Yeah, I'd oh, love man. to. I'd be, be awesome. with that. Yeah. Amazing. Uh so today to start out the entire series, at least season one, um, we wanted to 
kind of hit on a topic that is super prevalent across well, the globe right now. Yeah, uh, all over the place. The, I mean, you know, COVID-19, the coronavirus, COVID. the quarantine. Uh, I think everybody's just going absolutely crazy right now, just being locked inside and not having anything to do. And there's no sports. Yeah, you can't watch sports. There's none. I mean, UFC. Oh. Yeah, UFC. They, UFC's got golf. it. They've got the island. Golf. They do have the island. That's right. Yeah. Do you, um, do you know Do you know much about the island? I'm not super familiar with it. I know a lot it. about it. I'm not a big UFC guy. I watch the fights. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, are, if are, I had to sit down and really, like, talk about UFC, yeah. no. Are they doing it kind of like the NBA is about to do, where they they have a compound kind of thing and they keep so, all the players there? No. Or? Um, they test the athletes, the fighters, before sure. they okay. go in. And if one of them pa- uh, fails it, they right. don't fight. Okay. Um, sure. The arenas, the Smart. octagons are completely empty. Okay. Um, no fans. There's no fans, nothing. Okay. It's just them fighting. Um, it's really interesting. You know, UFC really didn't stop. Even, like, I mean, they stopped for a little bit because, you know, some of the fighters backed out when COVID really hit. But mm-hmm. they've been consistently fighting a lot really uh, yeah okay. i mean they I, stopped for a little bit but yeah. they're back on i guess i've seen that and boxing boxing um, i've seen the <laughs> i've actually seen the world series of cornhole has been going on recently really? yeah so they what they do is they wear their n95 masks okay. and they play outside and so there's like there's uh, there's a field judge and then they have the camera crew yeah. and then the two people playing and they okay. have to stay a certain distance apart um, social distance yeah just the social distancing six okay. feet and they just they play normal cornhole and that's actually been on espn multiple times a week for the wow. last like three months and it's super boring but i i mean that's the dream though right like the dream is to be a professional <laughs> cornhole player it is or like um what is that the shuffleboard on ice curling curling yeah i mean did you see those guys in the winter olympics <laughs> well, sure, do you know what i'm talking about yeah curling the, actually the made a comeback team. because of that yeah the united <laughs> states team won the gold Oh, yeah, they won the gold right. medal, and it's just like a <laughs> bunch of like forty plus year old men who obviously just drink a bunch of beer, yeah. and and curl. Yeah, they can, like, I mean they can hide their guts pretty well with those big sweaters, but you know past they're that. in like tight jerseys. <laughs> Were they? Yeah, they were gutting it out. I feel like the Canadian and Swedish teams were all wearing sweaters for some reason. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're probably embarrassed of the belly. And but I'm in also, America, we like the belly. They're embarrassed that they lost the United States True. in a curling match. I mean, it's one of the national sports of Canada. Yeah. It's I, lacrosse and curling. And curling, yeah. 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 We Which make, is weird, right? It, lacrosse and, and curling instead of hockey? <laughs> What's going on there, Just, just the fact, too, that we had... I don't know if you remember... You know, the um, ESPN 8, the Ocho, is not yeah. actually a real network. It should be. It should be. Absolutely. I've been pushing for that for years. Come on, ESPN. Let's, Let's do the Ocho. Shout, shout out. Hashtag ESPN. The make Ocho. the Ocho happen. Dude, it would be great. Okay. Right now, can you imagine how good that would be? Do you realize how high their television ratings would be? If Outrageously they one? high. I mean, Cornhole, I know Cornhole, you could do... Could do the world racing of marbles. Darts is kind of up there. Darts I is mean, up there. So they had a, marbles. That's a good one. So I I watched when they had ESPN Eight Theatre. They had like eight or nine crazy events that day. So I okay. watched like half of them. Right. I would guess. And so they had uh, they had the World Championships of Cherry Pit Spitting. And so basically, it's just, it was held in Michigan. People just spit cherries. People, they literally they get it. They pick up a cherry with their hand and they have to chew it and they have to get the cherry and they have to spit it as far as they can. And there's okay. two forms. That you have to follow when you're when you're playing. You can either do a high arching spit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing <laughs> in the entire to get world. More, to try to get more accurate, like try to get more a more accurate shot. Okay. But you take the risk of if there's a breeze or there's any oh, type yeah. of wind it resistance. The, the it's going to change the trajectory of the pit. Are you trying to like hit it into something? You're trying to just get it as far as you can. It's, okay. it's like throwing discus or the javelin or something okay. like that. You know, it's just like a wide open area huh. and there's points. I wonder if there's like on each point of the field. ways to spit farther. There are. So I the, wonder, they eat most of the cherry off. So there's no resistance. Yeah, they do. So they I think the, one of the things outside of using the tongue is they like hold it with their tongue up against their teeth and okay. they skin it in their mouth really quick. So okay. it takes out all like you get as much morsels off of the actual right. pit itself because you don't want that weighing it down no, you want it to be ab- as light as possible absolutely not i mean okay. this is the world championships yeah. here you gotta bring it yeah you bring got it every day. to yeah every single time and all day every day the second way they do it is they actually just spit it as hard as they can in a straight line okay but the thing is if you if you angle it down too much and like your tongue isn't positioned well enough in your mouth when you spit it out right. it could actually end up the trajectory may not be straight. It may actually be like a downward 
like 45 degree angle. Right, you don't want that. So you, that's why a lot of people try to do the arch. The arch. That's what the commentators were saying. I don't the know. Com- how do you commentate cherry spin? They were doing it. I, I mean, Gary actually was... Gary, Gary, for those of you that, if you listen to our other podcast, I Don't Give a Flick, a film podcast produced by Lead Feather Productions, uh, out every Friday night of every week. Tune in. Uh, anyways, he was coming out, he was going to work that day or something, he yeah. walked out and he was like, what the fuck are you <laughs> What watching? is going on <laughs> And I was like, here. it's the World Championships of Cherry Pit Spin. Yeah. <laughs> you know like, what I think okay. would be really cool too? Mm. Esports. Esports would be really you know? cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised it hasn't become bigger. It was on ESPN. I watched a little bit. League of Legends was on there. Okay. Uh, some CSGO. Um, yeah. You know, I'm a big video game nerd. You are a so, big, big video game nerd. Uh, so I don't understand why that didn't make a bigger scene. They because had, you can do that at home. You can do it at home. They're doing it. They had the, they had the um, remember they had all current NBA players. Yeah, play the NBA 2K. The 2K tournament. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was really cool. I like that. And who? I forgot Booker. who won. I think Devin Booker, Booker Devin won. Booker That's right. Won. The Phoenix Suns. Yeah. 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 Um, that was pretty interesting. I, I, you guess. know, speaking of that I mean, too, I, I like the horse competition too. Do you know yes, what I'm talking yeah, about? The NBA right. horse competition because right. um, they were they were doing that. They, uh, some Mike retired Conley players. Won, got yeah, Mike Conley. He did some crazy stuff the, with a basketball. The funny thing is, because he's naturally left-handed, remember the shots he was taking. A lot of them you have to oh, be yeah. ambidextrous to yeah, do. Yeah, you did. And so I, I, for the life of me, can't remember who he was playing against in the championship. But he was yeah. doing all these left-handed shots. Was it and Zach switching. Levine? It might have been Zach Levine. I can't. I can't remember if that's, that's right okay. or not. But. It, but either way, like the fact that he was able to do all of these shots, yeah. and then I guess we'll just say for the sake of argument, it was Zach Levine, and he was. I remember whoever they were talking to who lost was just like he's like, I, it's unfair. Yeah. He's like, I can't. I mean, he's like, kudos to the guy and hats off to him for beat my ass, but. Yeah, I, what can I, you what do? What can I do? Yeah, nothing. You know, like he he plays that way every day, and yeah, he had to, all the time. You know, being as we're a primarily right-handed society, mm-hmm. you know, you know. If, shout out to the lefties. Shout out to yeah, thank you. Right yeah. here, what up? You know, even though I write left-handed and I eat left-handed, but everything else I do with my right hand. Yeah, everything, even bowling. You know, there's a lot of advantage <laughs> to being a lefty in some sports. Baseball, if you're a left-handed hitter, True. you're closer to first base. That's why people want to be switch hitters. Chipper Jones, you know, a lot of them. Okay, yeah. Who else was Who else was a big switch hitter? I feel like uh, there's more I should know. Chipper Jones, Lance Berkman. Uh, okay. He was a switch hitter. But you know what's weird about Lance Berkman being a switch hitter? He actually seemed to hit more home runs right-handed. Really? Yeah. And it makes a little bit of sense because he played at Minute Maid. Okay. And you know you got the Crawford boxes there in left field, and it's a short field up there. Are there any Are there any type of tests that they ran that are pretty common that would show for switch hitters which side they're better with hitting? Is so, it like sixty percent or better at the? Re- I guess the test would be they'd look at batting average, hitting percentage, okay. you know, strikeout percent- percentage. Why, stuff why like that. Why did they do that? I mean, you're a former baseball player, so why, so why, did, why they did they switch they hit? That? Yeah, it's much easier to see the ball mm-hmm. um, from like a left-handed pitcher if you're on the right side of the plate. And it's much easier to see the ball if you're hitting on the left-hand side of the plate for a right-handed pitcher. And so a lot of people want to hit on the left-hand side because most pitchers are right-handed. Sure. And so, you know, you get that advantage because with baseball, you know, you have milliseconds to decide whether you're going to swing or not. Yeah. And so if you can see the ball Mm -hmm. quicker, you can decide faster. What was the hardest pitch ever thrown that you had to hit on a consistent basis? What was the most difficult one? For you personally, yeah. The hardest pitch for me would probably be I hated sliders. Okay. I hated them. Why is that? Where do they break in the rotation of the ball? Because I know so that happens. It depends somewhere. on the pitcher. Okay. Um, but a lot of the times it's kind of ha- like for me, the slider, it seems to break halfway to the batters, uh, to the plate. Okay. And it does this weird thing where like a curveball kind of has like a loop pattern when it, when it breaks, a slider is kind of like a fastball. It's fast and it, it, it hooks almost. Mm-hmm. It's terrifying if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, it's just, you have to, again, you have to decide so quickly in yeah. baseball to whether you're going to swing or not. Balls, I mean, that's that's just on the pitch, right? You yeah. decide if it's a fastball, changeup, curveball, slider. Yeah. If there's a million other pitches. But then you also have to decide if, the, if it's a ball or strike. Mm-hmm. So. so so, I guess currently in the MLB, mm-hmm. what do they claim is current? Because I know for a long time the knuckleball yeah. was coming back as a most difficult. And I, I think it was a, it almost seemed like a fad because I stopped hearing about it a couple years ago. So you know, the you knuckleball really is weird okay. because you, it's uncontrollable, really. Like okay. the pitchers who throw it, like the ball, it kind of darts back and forth. And it's, I would say it's hard to hit because 
people, they don't see it very often. You know, like sure. if if there were a lot more knuckleball pitchers and you really started to see that ball, ball coming back, they'd get shelled. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of what happened too. you know, Tim Wakefield. He was the big knuckleball pitcher in the 90s, early 2000s. He played mm -hmm. for the Boston Red Sox. He used to throw that pitch like crazy. And he had games where it was hot and yeah. he was he was unhittable when it was hot. But when that pitch kind of hung up there a little bit, he would get rocked. And I mean, rocked. Yeah. So it's a dangerous pitch and it's either on or off. So. Okay. So if the knuckleball is kind of gone out of style. Yeah, I would say it's gone what, out of style. What, what, uh, what do you see a lot of, what do you see being a difficult pitch for most, most batters nowadays? I mean, we're still going curveball, slider, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I mean, fastballs, if you're talking like Chapman type fastballs, where yeah. you're, or where you're in like the 102, 103 miles an hour. Where he's only pitching, yeah, he's only coming in one inning and yeah. just like wrecking you for, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and. You know, you look at the strikeout leaders, a lot of them, Nolan Ryan, his fastball was ridiculous. Yeah, he was consistently over in the triple oh, yeah. digits, wasn't he? Uh, I mm -hmm. wouldn't say triple digits, probably high 90s, but mm -hmm. that was real fast back yeah. then. But he was a starting pitcher. Yes. Like, for his entire yes. career almost, But he right? also had, like, it was a weird thing, like, his win percentage isn't that good. Like, if you look at but Nolan he also Ryan's win for, percentage... He played for the Rangers for the majority yeah, of Yeah, he played for some bad teams, <laughs> in but... In the 80s and the... You know, I mean, there's some 70s and 80s bad and 90s. teams that people play on that the pitchers still have a good win percentage. Mm -hmm. So, Nolan Ryan... Again, he was also kind of like a knuckleball. When he was hot, he was unhittable. Sure. I mean, seven no hitters, a bunch of perfect games. Like he's, wow. uh, yeah, he's. I didn't know there were seven. Damn. Yeah, he wow, hit that's... seven no hitters a perfect game. So yeah. that's is is that the record? Is yeah, that the MLB he, record. He holds no the hitters? most for no hitters. Wow. So yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeez. And he makes really good hot dogs. And yes, meat. he does make so, good hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. They are the delicious. sausage king. The sausage king of of Texas. Yeah. Of Whatever county he lives in right now. Or Somewhere. just in Texas in general. Yeah, okay. Just in Texas in general. Yeah, I guess I so. Mean, you don't like Oscar Mayer? No. Oscar Mayer Wieners? No. Oscar Mayer is Oscar Mayer not good. Wiener. They have a really catchy jingle, though. They do. And they have the, like, weenie whistles and the... Oh, I love the weenie And the whole, like, cool. car. I don't know if they do that anymore. The weenie mobile? Yeah, the weenie mobile. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think it's PC to say weenie mobile anymore, so... You say weenie mobile. Yeah. Because it sounds funny. You weenie. Know? It sounds silly. And no a one little. gets mad at silly, you know? Like, nobody can get mad at silly. You can't be... <coughs> even if it's... Even if it's... I feel like if it's not PC, if you're silly with your yeah, word you can be choice, silly. then it's okay. True. <laughs> True. I, I don't Weenie. know. Yeah. It's Weenie subjective, Weenie I guess. It depends on the person. Um, okay, no. so so going back to the... Going back to the, uh, the quarantine, yeah. uh, you know, with... Uh, that would be great, yeah, if ESPN 8, the Ocho, came out. They had an... Uh, they had another thing. Uh, they had uh, dodgeball. Yeah. Where they had the world championship. They also Love had dodgeball. They also had dodgeball where they had it was like extreme dodgeball where you had jugglers at the back of the dodgeball court on each team. What professional the heck? Jugger, jugglers, and they had like the teams could ha they could defend the juggler, and if they knocked one of the cones or one of the pins out mm -hmm. of the juggler's hand and it messed up their juggling motion and they dropped everything, then the other team would win and they'd get a point. That's awesome. It was really cool. So, like, some teams would have, like, two or three people back there guarding the juggler, yeah. and other people, what they would do if they had the two or three people, their strategy was just to just loft the ball over. Right. So it was over the outstretched arms of the defenders, and, you know, most of the jugglers, they're juggling fairly juggling, high. Yeah. Just knock it over from that or distract them. Right. Some other teams would go in and they'd have, like, a really tall person, and then they'd put, like, a lighter person on their shoulders, and then they would be like a, a double-sized human, and they would just be like, you know, could waving you, their arms around. Can like you a, hit the juggle, like, whatever they were juggling out the, of the yeah, air? Yeah, you could hit them in the nuts if you wanted to. There's what, if, no, what if you hit them out of the air, like what they're juggling? As as long as they continue with the juggle. If, okay. So if it goes from five pins all the way, all of a sudden, to four, and as long as they don't drop all of them, then it doesn't count as a point. Okay. Yeah, so as long as they keep the motion going, from what I understood, at least. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, a, they, you know, they had, there was one where they, like, put gelatin or uh vaseline or it was vaseline vaseline on this gigantic staircase and then they had like kids in full body wetsuits they would <laughs> ladder them up in vaseline and they would race to the top of the stairs why don't we have stuff like that when I we were a know. kid that would have been that so sounds fun fantastic right i would, I would do no that more now. legend of the hidden temple just racing up stairs no, with vaseline. oh my god i did like legend of the hidden temple yeah it was great but i, I still global would. guts do you remember that show? I remember show? Global Guts, yes. That's kind of sporty. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could There's just start... rock climbing? We could just start our own game show network. That'd be cool. Sports show network. Sports, sports show network? Sports game show network? I don't know. We could have kids golf. We could have kids and golf. play random sports that they don't know. We, we could play uh, Ultimate Ball. Yeah, ball. Yeah, we yeah. just play ball. Ultimate Ball. ball. We, uh, we created a game in my house called Ball, 
my girlfriend and I a while back. Yeah. And uh, ball it's is great. Basically, just throwing a ball past another person. And if you get it past them, you get <laughs> yeah. a point. Yeah. If they block it, they get a point. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Gary loves it. Gary loves that yeah. game. He Don't loves you, Gary? ball. No. Gary is Gary, Gary, Gary's Gary's screaming our, uh, yes right now. Gary's our producer and audio technician. He is somewhere, but uh, we'll be yelling at him through the course of yeah, most of, most every episode. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, so what have you seen currently from a lot of the athletes that are being stuck inside? How are they training, at least at the beginning of quarantine? Now it's kind of let up a little bit. Yeah. We may see a spike later in a couple months. We may not. Who knows? But, you know, what were they doing and stuff? The only thing I had noticed, I noticed a lot of like, I saw like Steph Curry and even guys like Mike Conley. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin. They were basically just doing trick shots with golf balls or they would take like, they take rolled up socks and they would do trick shots into trash cans. That's cool. Yeah. And that's how they would train. I remember um, because who was it? Um, Trey Young, point Mm -hmm. guard, point guard, all-star point guard for the Hawks. He actually didn't have access for the first month from what I recall to any type of training yeah, facility. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so he would just stand he at a trash anything. can, and he would just he would he would do like yeah. around the world three point shooting, and he which would is just, cool. Yeah, he just <clears throat> practice like that. No, I'm seeing no. a lot of like workout stuff. You know. Okay. Uh, I know. I know. Des Bryant got into some serious trouble because yes. he was working out with people. Yeah. You know, Zeke Elliott, Dak D- Prescott, Dak and Zeke yeah, both were. Yeah, they're all out there working yeah. out. So you, you know, one th- a funny thing I saw the other day on uh, it wasn't on PTI. It was on. Um, What's the show where they have four a panel of four people and they oh, debate uh, and get points? Is it first take? No, that's not no, it. No, not first take. Um, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember it either. Anyways, sorry, ESPN. It's fine. Um, <laughs> they, yeah, like they need more shout outs. Um, God, yeah, we need to. I need to watch more. I need to stop giving ESPN my money. It's like yeah. they're like the Amazon of the sports world. They like, really they, are. They just they they have the monopoly on the full sports. Yeah, world, you know. I mean, I I need to start watching Fox Sports. Fox sports. Or, uh, but it's just he's is really good too channel, though I they mean, are i love a lot the of golf channel is actually pretty good uh, you know me i like to play golf more than i like to watch it yeah yeah i can i can understand that yeah i mean it's a pretty you know it's a pretty boring game to watch you know yeah yeah i don't know sometimes i, I was really just i, was, I yeah, mean i was i was trying to get gary's goat gary's favorite game is gary golf, so. loves watching golf gary loves to watch golf yeah a lot. all the time if he could just sit at home watch golf all day and eat a bag of doritos over and over again doritos I'm just guessing. You know what I think he yeah, do? I think that's the chips Gary likes. I have no idea. I don't think he really eats chips. Know. What would you eat, Gary? Uh, Doritos sounds good. Or Pringles. 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 Okay. Yeah, but Pringles are hard to get out of the can. Pringles are hard to get out of the can. Why don't they have... You can do the duck bill with the Pringles, though. Yeah, but... That's I, pretty fun. I don't understand why... Why don't they have something that twists from the bottom of a Pringles can that pushes the chips upwards? Why have they not done that yet? I mean, couldn't you just... That's not a bad, but couldn't you just do that with a normal can? You just, you pop off the top and then turn it upside down? Yeah, but then you get all the, the crumbs come out, because there's always crumbs at the bottom of a Pringle can. If you're not careful with it. There well, because are. you have to reach in. they do break easily. Yeah. They do break easily. If you had, like, a mechanical device that you twist it up, I, think, I know that's completely... I think we should invent it yeah. and then patent it and Send sell it, it with a royalty to Pringles, <laughs> or whoever owns Pringles now. The Pringles don't take that from me. Yeah. Back yeah. off my Back off mechanical our idea, twisting idea. Yeah, once we pop, we can't stop either. Yeah. So, so okay. Um, currently with uh, everything, so I guess currently with everything going on, uh, you know, we we just we haven't had any sports at all, and it sucks. Yeah, and it's, it's horrible. awful. But it's coming back now a little bit. It is coming back Soccer. now. Yeah, that's right. I guess soccer's going. And, and all of these, all of these events, and all these sports that are coming back, mm-hmm. they don't have fans in the yeah, audience. Yeah, it's really weird. So it's just strange it's to really watch. It. Weird. Even something like UFC is yeah. weird to watch. Yeah, it's really weird. You know, boxing. I'm, and I'm I miss sure. that too. Yeah. I miss like UFC. They talk. They pan over all the famous celebrities that are there to watch people beat each other up. Like, yeah. it's all gone. Yeah, it there, sucks. There's there's nothing anymore. You know, and so it's it's kind of like, how do we how do we survive? How do we weather the storm when we come back? Because Currently, what's going on, and we're going to jump in here. I think it's a good segue point to the major, uh, the major leagues. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just let's go to baseball. Okay. You know? um, so you were reading up recently on yeah. what the ML, what Major League Baseball is going to do with uh, the rest of their season, if yeah. anything. Um, I mean, they're arguing right now, and they're going to be arguing for the foreseeable future. You know, mm-hmm. Andrew McCutcheon, he did this really funny skit. I don't know if you saw it or not. Mm-mm. But he's the so, star for the. Pirates? He used or? to play for the Pirates. He went to the Yankees, yeah, he's, and I don't okay. know where he is now. He uh, somewhere. He's he's kind of he got injured a bunch, and now he's he's kind of okay. roaming around. But uh, he did this dreaded. really funny thing where he brought in a like a juice box, 
and he was <laughs> okay. he was playing like the MLB was like, okay, you know, this is what we want you to do. Uh-huh. And then uh, he goes, okay, but we want juice. And then the MLB <laughs> came out and was like, okay, but here's some water. And he's like, but we really want juice. And what he's trying to say is, you know, the MLB Players Association, they want, you know, more games. Sure. They want to be paid for that. And they have this specific goal. And the M- the managers and everybody, they don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And so they're they're fighting over it right now. And I honestly, I mean, I don't know if we're going to see any MLB games. You think you don't think you don't think I so, honestly huh? don't know if we'll see any. Hmm. If we do, it'll probably be like 42 games. Okay. 42, 44. Do you think they there is there a possibility that they're going to move the season and the World Series back to like December or January to like conflict with the Super Bowl or something? I, don't know. Or? I mean, it's really hard to play baseball in the winter. It's true. There's not many, you know, not many indoor there's parks. some indoor parks or indoor stadiums. Yeah. That's what How we call them. How many are there in the States right now? Do you oh, remember? Oh, that's a, that's a Houston, hard question. Houston's got yeah, Minute Maid. Houston has Minute Maid. It goes, you know, they can open and close it. Um, I think Philadelphia has one. A lot of the northern uh, stadiums. I know the Twins play in one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sure the Brewers. Yeah, I think the Brewers Maybe. do. I mean, there's a bunch. Yeah. But, I mean, there's still, like, Yankee stadiums open. Fenway, open, yeah. you know. Wrigley, open. Open, yeah. exactly. So you got this issue where if you go too deep into the seasons uh, and you start talking about October, November, December, it's going to be cold. Yeah. And also it hurts when you get an inside pitch and you hit a hit it on the oh, with God, a bat. I, I can't imagine being the catcher during that. Like, oh, actually, yeah. Catch, catching that no. when it's freaking yeah, it 30 degrees out, 40 degrees yeah, out. it's not fun. Yeah, so. at least in those northern states, at least by the time – you know, it really gets cold. It's, you know, it may be October, but yeah. the World Series is rolling around. Right. And so they're going to be done with the season. Right, exactly. Point. Yeah. And a lot um, of those northern teams, they don't really play in the World Series anymore because they're getting dominated. Yeah, that's right. Go Astros. Go Astros. <laughs> Go Astros. Go Astros. How do you feel about, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna kind of branch off a little bit. How do you feel about the Astros' most recent cheating allegations? What's uh, going on with that? How do you feel about that? You're a lifelong Astros fan. I am fan. a lifelong Astros fan. I mean, you like these guys when they were Tanking, yeah, you know? I've always <laughs> liked them. I watched them when they lost 103 plus games. Yeah, you know, I I would go to the stadium and watch. Yeah. They were bad, really bad. So refresh um, the memories of of our listeners that don't recall what okay. exactly happened with with the allegations the MLB and the sanctions uh, imposing. So what happened was the Astros got caught um, cheating, okay. and what they did was they had a person filming. Um, all the signs that the okay. pitcher and catcher were giving. Did they get that idea from Bill Belichick and the New England <laughs> Patriots? Yeah, probably okay. actually. Okay. Uh, no, they probably sure they they've been people. People have been stealing signs forever. Uh, <laughs> we sure, talked about I'm this sure. earlier. You know, the shot heard around the world was actually uh, oh. found by a telescope. You know, oh. they they uh, person think, was in the back. Not not the American Revolution. No, not the when American the Brits, Revolution. Okay, when the red no. fire. Okay, no. all right. But uh, they right. actually had a telescope out in center field. Uh And they use Morse code to tell uh, the batter what the pitcher was about to throw. Okay. So that's way long ago. But the Astros kind of took that to another level. So did they relay it? So they, the person who was looking through the telescope, they relayed it to to the the manager and the dugout then gave the the sign to the batter. Okay. And so what the Astros did actually was they had somebody filming in real time. And that went... They were to, streaming. Yeah. What? They streamed it to that the dugout. I didn't hear about it. I guess I didn't yeah. read too deep into it. They but. streamed it to the dugout, and then there was somebody in the dugout, and if it was a changeup or, you know, a slow pitch, they'd hit a trash can. And so the, the player could hear the trash can bangs. Yeah. Yeah. They, they had a player doing it, or did they have a plant in the had, crowd, or... So I, they had a video guy doing it in center field, videoing. And then they had well, just the trash a, can is what I meant. The trash like, can yeah. was not a player. It was just a staff... Somebody okay. on the staff. So it was a it was a plant. So somebody yeah. planted somewhere in yes. the crowd, or well, no, it was in the in, dugout. In the dugout. Yeah, okay. in the back of the dugout. Yeah. What? Yeah. But you know, I I've talked about this before. Cheating has always been in baseball. Yeah. It's a thing to do in baseball. Well, it's in every sport. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. This isn't just baseball. I mean, it's so big in baseball, though. You got it? pine tars, okay. you know, on the baseball. Cork, corked bats. Corked you know? bats. Steroids. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, let's not forget about Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, God. Barry Bonds. Sammy. Yeah, Bond. That man will have an asterisk next to his name forever until the and day. And he should. Yeah. He, he should have an asterisk. For what do you think? And I, I will. We can have a completely separate episode on yeah. just baseball or things in baseball. Yeah. But Pete Rose, okay, most okay. hits of all time. Yeah. Still not into the Hall of Fame. And he won't be, ever. Why? That's not going to happen because he bet on baseball. Okay. You don't bet a, a bet on sports. Lots of people bet on sports. Yeah, but you're not Tons a man. He was a manager. 
and he was betting. Okay. I mean, there's people but, saying, oh, he never bet against his team. There Maybe. You go. He wasn't forcing his team to lose games. Yeah. He wasn't flipping anything. Yeah. So he, you know, the curve was not against him at yeah. all. You know, he was think, doing everything he could to get his team to win. I think here's the thing. If anybody else had done it, it would have been a lighter punishment. Okay. But because it was Pete Rose, okay. and he has a reputation. Does and, he? Yeah, okay. of not being the nicest person. All right. He's kind of grumpy. Is the best way. He's grumpy. He's gr- what a polite like, way to say yeah. someone's an asshole. He's like Bill Belichick. He's just grumpy. I hate Bill Belichick. Yeah, but he's right. just grumpy. We're going to do a Patriots podcast later. Yeah. Calm down, Johnny. Calm down. But he's, he's just done. grumpy. And so I think if anybody else had done it, he'd be in the hall. But because okay. it was him, he's not there. Okay. And honestly, I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. He didn't do it when he was playing. playing. That's, my, that's my argument all so the time. I don't understand it. Yeah. And, you know, my dad is a huge Pete Rose fan. Is he? Huge. He's got baseball bats when he was a kid, so yeah. he used to get the Pete Rose baseball bat. Okay. The Pete Rose gloves. I've ever, got, does I've he got have, some. Does he, has he ever had anything signed by Pete Rose? No. Okay. That'd be a great present to him. You but, should do that. Uh, that's some serious money. Well, you know. It was like easily a couple grand there for yeah. signed Pete Rose. Maybe later. Yeah. After I graduate college. We'll there see you that. go. Yeah. Hey, your girlfriend makes money. Yeah, we'll make <laughs> her buy it. <laughs> Happy hey, birthday, Dad. Hey, Caitlin bought this hey, for Caitlin, you. Hey, Caitlin, guess what? <laughs> Let me use our savings for yeah, a gift we'll just blow it. for you. And then yeah. you spend the majority of the money on your dad, and then you get Caitlin like a bouquet of flowers and say, yeah. see, I did I get did a present it. for you. We I just got didn't it. say how much money I was going to spend right. on you. It's just yeah. a box of chocolates. Yeah, don't really do that. No, she My would kill me. She would yeah, kill she me. She might leave you, too. No. Probably not. No. Okay. Well, maybe you could do it then. Yeah, let's try it. Let's push, I love this. Let's push Can we do a limits. live episode where you get where we actually <laughs> film you giving Just, her the bouquet of flowers, yeah. and she's like, "Aw," oh, and thanks. you're like, "Here's the surprise I <laughs> promised." She's like, "What?" Uh, here you that go. That was five thousand dollars. How much you got? I don't know. Oh God. Um, yeah, man. Okay, so fa- fair enough. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I think the guy who's your all-time hits leader deserves to be in the Hall of Fame yeah. after what forty years it's been, right? Since he was a manager, it's Longer been a long that? time. I don't think it's been forty years. You don't think it's been 40? I thought it was in the mm. 70s. That oh, yeah, maybe 70s it has. or 80s that was going on. It has. On. I'm getting yeah. older. You are. Yeah. You're an old man now. I am. You're geriatric almost. Oh. Yeah. Getting there. Yeah. At some it's point. It's going to suck. Uh, okay, so, sure. Okay, so so MLB, you don't, you're not I, thinking I, that the I MLB... I honestly do not think the MLB is going to come back on. Interesting. I don't. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense for them to be, honestly. They're, a lot of their money, a lot of their revenue comes from fans. Sure. The ML, you know, I've talked about this before. Major League Baseball is a little bit boring to watch on TV. I love it. I'm a giant Major League Baseball fan. I've been yeah. a baseball fan forever. I can watch it on TV. But you're also an ex baseball player. Yes. And that's different. Baseball is a very popular sport in America. Yes. Don't get me wrong. But over the last, we were talking about this earlier. Mm-hmm. Since, and, and now the NFL, I mean, easily for the last oh, 50, yeah. 50 years has been Dominates. the Yeah, the colossus giant. Oh, yeah. That is the moneymaker yeah. of American sports. It's fun to watch people hit each other. It is. It's great, yeah. which has always you know surprised me why hockey never got more popular. But then again, I've watched a game of hockey on TV, and I don't really think it's that entertaining. I like hockey. You know, I'll watch it, and yeah. I'll keep up with it when it's during the playoffs and Stanley yeah. Cup Finals. Dude, the playoffs are real fun to watch. The playoffs are fun, yeah. really fun. Yeah. You know, um, congratulations to the Las Vegas Golden Knights on your... Stanley Cup. Wait, they didn't win. No, no, but they got there. First oh, yeah. year franchise. Yeah, first year franchise true. getting there. That's pretty impressive. They that's true. They didn't win, but you know. Hey, if you're not first, you're last. Ricky Bobby. Yeah, Ricky Bobby. That's right. <laughs> so. If you don't like Big Red, then <laughs> fuck you. Oh, I love Big Oh, I Big forgot Red. to mention there is explicit content allowed oh, yeah. in this podcast. So yeah, there will be a lot of explicit content. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to bleep this out. We don't do that. No for the, for the film podcast either. You we don't, don't believe anything. No. Wow. No. And Gary's got a potty mouth. I've got a potty mouth. I know. Oh my God. Maybe we should find a different producer. Yeah, this guy is... he's very upset right now. <laughs> this oh guy's my God. mad as hell. Oh my he God. just blasted that. <laughs> I'm a little afraid. Jesus. I peed myself a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I just can't control my bladder anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, no, so with, with the NFL being the major money maker over the last couple decades, yeah. uh, Major League Baseball was always right behind. Yeah. You know, with Numero the, dos. Yeah, with the yep. Yankees always being valued as one of the God, biggest. God, I hate the Yankees. I know you do. I I hate the Yankees. I hate the so Yankees much. too, man. So you know, much. I'd rather the Red Sox win. Yeah. Anytime they play each other, I always go for the Red yeah. Sox. I don't I'm, know why. I yeah. like the Red Sox. You know, I have really Fenway, no. Fenway, man. Of, Fenway Park is so cool. I've actually been to Fenway Park. So have I. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the only time of only only Major League Baseball stadium I've been to outside of Texas. Okay. So, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, really, 
since I was, well, since we were talking about since the twenty tens. Once the um, once the formation of super teams in yeah, the, NBA the NBA started, when LeBron went to Miami to join Bosch and Wade, oh. and even before that with yeah. the Boston Three Party yeah. with Garnett, Allen, Pierce, and, Pierce. and Allen, right? Yeah. Um, once those teams started to become just super common in the NBA mm-hmm. for the last you know ten to twelve years, the NBA's just becomes it's be it's been the fastest rising lucrative. Um, uh, organization in all of American major sports. Yeah. You know? Um, and it's actually had one of the fastest rises out of all. Now, granted, I guess this also probably started in the 90s when Michael Jordan Michael, was around. Yeah. Obviously, the rise, because in the, in the 60s and 70s with the NBA, there the, the NBA was flooded with the cocaine addictions yeah. from like oh, 25% so of its much. players. Yeah. They actually wouldn't even show live playoff games because it wasn't that popular. Yeah. They would record the games and then show them later. Well, and they weren't, you know? Have you watched some of those old games? Yeah, I have actually. They're yeah. not fun to watch. It's kind of boring. Yeah, it is. And it's all, not yeah. like in the NBA today, Mm-mm. where it's fast paced, mm-hmm. it's moving around like the ball never stops. You know, you know the Spurs <sighs> passing the ball around yeah. like they did. You like, want to know what the funny thing is, and I, and I won't get in. We promise we will get into all of these subjects <laughs> in more detail yeah. in later episodes. So tune in, hit the like button, and subscribe. But um, you know, the Spurs themselves, really, for the first eight or nine years that mm-hmm. they had Pop and Tim Duncan, they actually did not play any team-oriented basketball. That's true. It was all isolation in the yeah. post or on the elbow for Duncan. That's very true. That's it. But that's because Timmy was so dominant. True. But like, between 2000 and 2007 or eight, that was actually the slowest period in NBA history for hmm. that every team was averaging under 100 points a game. Yeah. Everybody. I didn't even think about yeah. that. That's It's 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 nuts. But in the 70s, they, um, in the 70s, also, we have to remember that uh, Will Chamberlain was ending his career. Yeah. Oscar Robertson was ending his yeah. career. Jerry West was on the tail end of his. Yeah. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who was the really the one of the only major stars in the NBA at that time, mm-hmm. had no equal. Yeah, there's the nobody. Who he was, was just completely. He was just dominant. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um, I mean, and, we saw that a little bit. Yeah. Now, granted, they didn't want to ton of titles in the 70s. The Bucks, I think they only won one. Yeah, they won But he was just always, you know, he, he as himself, he was the only exciting player. Yeah. And everybody, you know, it was just, we you're right. We have so much excitement now. Yeah. Once Curry, he, Harden. Mm-hmm. Ante de Kumpo. Yeah. LeBron himself. Yeah, Davis. Yeah, LeBron. Uh, I don't, Davis is, doesn't interest me. I like, I like Anthony Davis. I, I like him. I miss, just, I don't feel like his game is as oh, interesting man, as the dude, others. No, dude, I, I miss 90s basketball. I miss when yeah, you, you built wanna, the you team beat, around the beat big up man. People. I want, I want the bruisers. Yeah. I want to bring the bad boy Pistons yeah. back. I want to see Shaq dominate in the paint, even oh, though Duncan's man, my Shaq. boy. Shaq you know? was so good. Shaq was so the good. The elbows. The elbows. He was so good with his elbows. Team. David uh, yeah, Robinson. The dream. Patrick Ewing. Yeah. Shaq. Yeah. Dikembe Mutombo. Ooh. There's Matumbo. a ton of guys no, no, from that no. era, you know, um, and it always just makes me mad when people. I, I, I'm getting off. Yeah. I'm getting off topic. Good I'll, enough topic. I'll go to it later. Um, we will anyways, talk basketball. We could do it. We can. Starting with Michael Jordan and him making the NBA such an international phenomenon, and then the arrival of Yao Ming to the NBA. Oh yeah, Yao. Getting pulling China in. Yeah. In the mid 2000s, mm-hmm. and then the formation Jeremy of super Lin teams. Too. Don't forget about him. Well, he was Jer- huge for a little he bit. He was. He was. He was. I think Yao Ming more. Lin more, Sanity, dude. Lin Sanity was pretty big for like. Six weeks yeah. in New York. It was insane. And then Mello came in and was like, this is my team. Yeah, this is mine now. Mine <laughs> and now. And Amari Stoudemire's knees were like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's retire. Or let's retire now. <laughs> you had eight, you had seven good years with, yeah. with Steve Nash. You're, yeah. you're, you're finished. Um, <laughs> Mike D'Antoni kind of ran him to the ground. <laughs> yes. it's, it's sad, man. He was... Mike I thought D'Antoni he actually, does that to everyone. He could have been one of the best power forwards to ever play. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. getting off topic again. So... Because because of that, the NBA has at this point now become the second most lucrative league, yep. and is creeping up on the NFL. I yeah. mean, they're still yeah. probably a couple years away. I think it'll beat out the NFL. Yeah the the reason I mean you have to think about the salary cap in the NBA mm-hmm. continues to spike yep. year after year after yep. year, and now players even players who are mediocre mm-hmm. are making more than Michael Jordan made at yeah. his peak. Slow-mo. You know? Slow, yeah. Kyle Anderson. Kyle Anderson. Yeah, going from, San, going from the San Antonio farm system where he looked great. Yeah. Now he's with the Grizzlies, and yeah. he's barely on the second unit. Yeah. You know? So, you know, San, uh, point being, and you'll figure it out that Nick and I are both gigantic oh, Spurs, Spurs fans. fans. Yeah, we bleed silver and black. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, he's a product It's a little dangerous system. to bleed silver and black, it actually. Is. Yeah. It stains way worse than red. <laughs> yeah, it does. I feel like red would stain worse. More. How do you get out black from carpet? How do you get red out from carpet? Can you? 
I mean, you I can, I guess. I mean, that's kind of Gary, messy. can you? Why are you asking Gary? He doesn't look oh, clean. That's true. Have you seen his carpet's pretty messed Gary, up? Gary, your carpet looks horrible. Absolutely terrible. You wouldn't spill so much wine. <laughs> <laughs> Who spills wine? Nobody think, drinks wine Je- in this Je- house. Jessica was. Damn Jessica it, did Jess. both spill wine on the floor. <laughs> I just put my shoes on his yeah, carpet. I put my shoes that. on and run around. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Bring a bunch of dogs over and let them piss oh, on yeah. the carpet and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's, that's the thing with the MLB is they have to be careful now that they're moving down. Mm-hmm. And you're right. They build the majority of their, um, they, the majority of their revenue based off how popular they are yeah. with the fans. They need to um, do something exciting. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, you know, during they, quarantine, it's really hard. Yeah. And, you know, we've got play, like, we have arguably who could somebody who could be the best baseball player of all time in Mike Trout. Okay. That man. What about Bryce Harper? Bryce no. Harper's garbage. Okay. He, is he garbage or you just don't like him? Very no, no, much? I think he's a bad baseball. I do not think he should really? have gotten $300 million. $325 million. He's a, but he's a multi time all star, isn't he? He's in a league MVP too? Yeah, but that was one, he had one season. If you oh, look, at, multiple, no, if you look okay. at him, he kind of, he did well yeah. and then he went to an av- like an didn't average he, player. Didn't he just win a World Series with the Nationals though? No, he's with the Phillies now. Oh, he is with the yeah. Phillies. That's yeah. right. Yeah, he left the Nationals right. and then they won a World Series. <laughs> that's I don't, right. I, I don't on think that's back, a, on the arm of Steven Strasburg, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and Randon, and there's a bunch of really, you know, I was at game seven. I know. And you so, went, uh, you and our you and our good friend Neil. God, that was Neil so went. sad. I know. I don't even want to talk about Remember, it. Remember what was the sad part was so Nick and I are also very superstitious when it comes to watching sports. Yep. Um, I mean I've watched an entire Cowboys game with a TV remote on my head. Yeah. Sitting in the same chair in the same position, I wouldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. And they ended up winning. Yeah, because you did that. Yeah. But 100%. during the World Series, what happened with the Strohs? What when, do you mean? So when you remember you told me when you watched a game, they lost. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. When you I, watched a game, they lost. I did not watch any of the Astros World Series games. Well, I did watch. I watched four. Four of them, and, and they, they lost, lost all four. All of four. Them. And the three you didn't watch, the they three won. I didn't watch, they won. <laughs> I, but I mean, you can't just not go to the World Series. No, absolutely, especially when you're free tickets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it was an amazing experience, and I love it. It's I've now seen the Astros lose live twice in the World Series, so <laughs> I. Don't know if I'll go back, but yeah, <laughs> it was hard. But yes, they did, uh, going back to what we're talking about, they need to be more exciting. Yeah. And I think quarantine has really hurt them. Um, and it's taking, they need to come up with something to, to make, you know, the big bats happen again. Right. You know, the, the home run races that were the steroid era was huge for baseball. Right. I mean, afterwards, it kind of affected it because they were using roids. But sure. baseball skyrocketed back then. The ratings were going crazy. Um, now it's just kind of boring for people to watch yeah there's I, no three-point splashes dunks there's not man. big hits they don't allow collisions at the plate anymore Mm-mm. you don't get to cleat people at second base when you're sliding in I mean, that's, to break up dug- that's double also players. prevent injury i know? understand why it's there but i mean that was exciting <laughs> it true. was exciting to watch those plays happen yeah and now the most exciting thing that i think can happen is a home run mm-hmm. or robbing a home run yeah i mean you know what it when we look at a quarantine like this, and there are really no sports coming out right yeah. now, and with uh, that coupled with all of the rule changes in the NFL, mm-hmm. the NHL, MLB, and the NBA, mm-hmm. with restrictions on the contact you can have with players, yep. especially in the NFL yeah. and the NBA, which have both become so much less physical than they were 20 years ago. Yeah, a lot it's less physical. ridiculous. Now, in the MLB, it was I guess baseball is never really known as a contact sport, right. but what you just mentioned made it interesting you yes know? yeah it's it like was the fun. big the big hits those big plays yeah people tune in for stuff like that mm-hmm. you know i think adding all adding all that and taking away all the physicality i know that you have to protect the players yeah i, I agree with player that. safety you, is number one you do but also at the same time part of me is like well you know you're getting paid millions of dollars yeah. for this for your youth basically yeah. you're trading your youth and your talent yep. for millions of dollars yep. and for your family to be set up for the rest of your life oh, and yeah. to have a career outside of sports when you're done without, you know, without getting college yeah. education, yeah. you know, without having I'll to have a concussion any... for $300 million. I don't know. Would you? Yeah. If, you if it gave you Alzheimer's at 45? Huh? It depends. I mean, not, it's not going to happen to everybody, yeah. but it's a possibility. So it's the risk you take, though. You're very $300 right. million dollars yeah. changes your whole family tree. There are some, I mean, you know, you look at... Um, 
uh, you look, God, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he was defensive rookie of the year, like in 2014 for the 49ers. Okay. He played one season with the Niners. Didn't have a ton of head injuries, but because of what was going on with, um, I can't remember the, the name. CTE. Of, yeah, right. Uh, and with that disease, you know, it, it causes a lot of football players who had multiple head injuries oh, or head I trauma. I you're talking about now. I can't remember yeah, his name. Yeah, something Berkland or something. Um, but he played for the Niners and he retired yeah. at like 23 years yeah. old because he didn't want to risk the healthy figure. He's like, my was life and living until I'm 80. The no, one. Luke Kuechly played like eight, nine years. Yeah, then. but he just retired. He young. did. Just, yeah, young. he did. Yeah, he was about 30 years old. Yeah, um, that's young for a linebacker. It is. They usually play into their mid to late 30s. That is yeah. true. Um, but, you know, with those with those players, you they typically, they become violent randomly. Yeah. They have memory lapses. They black out. They yeah. have impaired vision. Suicide goes and up. Suicide goes up. So depression. Steve McNair. Yeah, Steve McNair was yeah. a huge one. You know, yeah. they, they, there's speculation that Junior Seau yeah, was part Junior of that Seau, list. Yeah, he, Junior when he killed and, himself, he said, research my brain. Yeah. And That's huge. They can't figure out if this disease is in your brain or in your head until after you die and they perform right. an autopsy. So there is definitely, I'm not trying to say that there's not any need at all for additional precautions yeah. to prevent these horrendous and horrific injuries. Yeah. But at the same time, when you're looking at the future of sports and if you want it to continue making money and continue to be relevant and mm -hmm. exciting, you have to sometimes yeah. think about bringing that stuff back. Yeah. You know? um, because if you take too much of the excitement and, you know, the scariness almost mm -hmm. away, it's not as interesting to watch. No, it's not. Like, <laughs> it's it little, really is. It's, it's kind of boring. <laughs> it's a guy with a ball running around. Yeah. And I mean. It, unless you're a diehard fan, like, yeah. I mean, like, we'd probably still watch it. I mean, we would like definitely said, probably I'll, still watch I'll it. I'll watch it. Yeah. I Because I like the game that much, but I, right. they're losing player people watching it. Right. Exactly. Um, so it's, it's and, and we're, I'm just presenting this argument for those of you listening to think about both sides of it. Yeah. You know, there's there's obviously the health and safety because all these players are people, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's also the risk at the same time that eventually it could become so despondent, transboring, uh, yeah. transboring, excuse me, despondent and boring, like we had said, that, that people just stop watching it yep. and we'll see the decline and complete... And we're watching it. You know, the completed... There won't be any sports existing ever. Yeah. Um, so if we get too clear careful... Yeah, we and yeah, that that, that ends, definitely will happen. It's something we got to be careful with, and having quarantine up right now is not helping. No, not at all. All these leagues are losing so much a money. A lot. The NFL is not yet. It will, but they're going to. There's no way we play in the fall. I if there, there is a I'll, major I'll give spike, you an example. if there's a major spike again in August or September, mm -hmm. I could see them not playing. But currently, I see them playing a shortened season of about ten. I don't know games. how they can. I'll give you an example. I'm okay. a UH, uh, University of Houston student. Okay. Um, University of Houston had training programs open up for the football team. Oh, I remember you telling me about this. Six okay. students of that football program mm -hmm. have already tested positive for COVID. Yeah. Since they started. That was like two weeks ago. Right. Two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it, football in particular, when you're training, is, you know, very... You're touching each other the whole time, you know, right. like you're lifting weights together. You're sure there's so much contact involved, especially with linebackers, linemen, you know, defensive back, wide receiver. It's going to be impossible not for them not to spread disease all yeah. over the place like COVID. It's going to happen. It's so it's, I, I just don't see it. It's potentially troubling, man. Yeah. I mean, I think that the NFL. Yeah, I, I think the NFL is probably the. See, I don't. Who's the, the commissioner of Major League Baseball is Bud Selig? Yeah, still. OK, so. I, I don't it? really know and yeah, I don't know enough about how he and the 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 gentleman who's the commissioner of um, the NHL I don't know um, I can't I don't, I don't know if the it's commissioner a, a the woman NHL. or man for the WNBA or MLB or excuse me um, or MLS my apologies uh, so I would have to say that the NFL in my opinion is the Rob Manfred Rob Manfred okay but he must have retired a while back he did uh, so Roger Goodell in my opinion is one of the worst commissioners in the history of sports altogether. It doesn't matter if it's just the NFL. It's Period. all sports in general. Honestly, I think he is the worst. Um, he's been doing that. I can't believe they renewed his contract. I think he's handled... And he got more money, too. And I know. He, hand, <laughs> he handled the... He, and, and I don't want to get into all of this. You know, we're, we're, we try to stay as a sports podcast, not political. But yeah. it obviously will come It'll up. happen. It so has to. the we're, kneeling of the flag... Yeah. Um, everything to do with the BLM movement, yep. everything to do with you know, when, when Ray Rice 
You know, oh, there was yeah. a video about him beating the the crap out of his yeah. uh, then fiance with Adrian Peterson and his son, his son mm-hmm. Greg Hardy, and yeah. his wife and the machine guns. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg Hardy's UFC with, fighter now. I heard about that. Yeah, <laughs> the Chiefs running back um, uh, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Yeah, and him kicking that they woman in the, her now, in the granted, gut. Yeah. Now there's and I, I know everyone's like, oh, there's two sides to every story, but that we're not talking about yeah. what actually happened, how the NFL handled it, especially the Ray Rice Awful. incident, especially the Ray Rice, Awful. and especially the kneeling for the anthem incident. They just they either ignore it. Or let it go. They don't. He doesn't take one stance on. Yeah, he didn't make. Side. A, he didn't make a stand. No, he didn't. And, and he's still not making a stand. No, well, he did now. And he said, "Okay, yeah, go ahead and kneel." Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. We we support you. We made a mistake. Right. So the big thing that they're not talking about though is Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. And they're not talking. They're, they're he has this conspiracy theory in his head that that every owner, which I think all of them are are supposed to be white in the NFL. Yeah. That they're all blacklisting him from the NFL yep. because of what he because did. Because of what he did. You know? Now, granted, Colin Kaepernick, I think he's probably a worse quarterback than all starting 32 quarterbacks in the NFL currently. Should he be at least maybe on maybe on one of the... Is maybe he? on, like, the Jaguars. Or like, yeah, okay. So maybe on one of... Maybe on, like... He's, uh, the he Jag- wouldn't be a top is, 30 who quarterback. Who is the Jaguars quarterback? Uh, the, they had... The guy with the mustache. I forgot his name. Uh, well, I mean, Nick Foles was supposed yeah, to be... Yeah, but he's in Chicago now. Garner Minshew. Yep, Garner Minshew. Minshew, yeah. He, um, I would put Kaepernick over him. Maybe. Maybe. But, I mean... So, I mean, here, here's the thing. But is... Uh, despite yeah. his talent level, would he not be good enough to be a, a second string? But he doesn't want to be second string either. He doesn't want to, but I have read interviews of him saying, he's like, look, to get back in the NFL, I'll work my way back yeah, in. He's yeah. like, I'll come in as a second team yeah. or a third team and I'll fight for a starting spot. So maybe that, maybe his suspicions, yeah, they might be yeah, true. Yeah. It's very possible. It's, it might be true. We have no idea. But yeah, anyways, the entire point of, of this us bringing up this portion of the debate is that Roger Goodell has just handled this so poorly yeah. because he ignores all of these things instead of yeah. taking a side and taking a strong stance on either side mm-hmm. and supporting it. He just kind of like the answers he gives in interviews yeah, are super just, ambiguous. And it's bullshit, and honestly. Yeah, and they're, it's and they're vague. complete bullshit yeah. answers. He it, has never really taken a stand one side or the other. And it's awful. Yeah. It's absolutely awful. Yeah. And you know, I am absolutely terrified to see how he handles COVID. <laughs> that's, and mean, that's where my next point was going for the NFL. Was absolutely terrifying. He's just, the NFL, first off, we, as we all know, is is honestly, it's probably the biggest cash grab out of any of the major sports. Yeah. Out of any of them. You know, yeah. They clearly, for the most part, I mean, he's the one that, uh, you, CTE was the disease, right? Yep, CTE. Okay. So CTE, he, he, I remember he was the one that... He could have pushed through the testing, and he could have yeah, but taken the results it. from that one uh, from that one doctor yep. um, that had come forward and done all the autopsies. Mm-hmm. He could have pushed that forward and been like, "Look, we as an organization need to do better." Yeah, we need towards to figure our this players. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we we should. The NFL knew about CTE for yeah. a long time and did nothing. They did nothing. Nothing because they were scared. Yeah, they're scared of what I would love happen. the NFL. I love football. Oh yeah, I love, I love football. The t- I love the players. We're Texas I love the team. boys. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> we I love mean, football. Cowboys until we die, baby. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, and, we you know, boys. Sure a lot of you, you know, love, I'm sure you call them the cowgirls. You call them yeah. whatever you want. We're going back to the Super Bowl. Yeah, this year. As soon as Jerry Jones passes away. No, um, this year. Just kidding. Now, we, we might, he's actually started Our to release team the reins. Looks good. Todd, Todd, um, uh, Todd M- McKay. Todd McQuay, whoever our director of personal scouting is. Yeah. Um, and even Stephen Jones. He, yeah, Stephen Jones. Jerry's starting to loosen. He's starting to loosen the reins draft. a little I bit. I liked our draft. They've been drafted, drafted really well. They drafted the best available instead of what mm-hmm. we used to do, yeah. which was draft meet the position. Meet the position. Right. You know, Rod Mar- Marinelli really screwed us on that front. Well, Taco it's... Charlton. <laughs> Can we talk about that? T.J. Watt was tra- picked two picks later. Two picks later. God. I Taco don't, I don't, Charlton. I don't want to talk about it. We're supposed to COVID nineteen. That's where we're going to concentrate. Sorry. That's all right. You see, you see how interesting this podcast could be because Nick and I have such Taco, a vast man. knowledge of different things. So in sports, much, so much detail. And if you tune in, you can have you can a have piece all, and a sneak preview yeah. into that knowledge. Yeah. Anyways, um, so I, so you know with that, but that's back to the point. Is yeah, yeah I don't think Roger Goodell is going to handle oh, this upcoming twenty twenty season gonna be very well. Awful. At all. Yeah, there's always there's already talk of them because they were supposed to do training um, camps start up soon. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And now they're talking about reducing uh, by two season games, 
And okay, so think, going to 15 right. instead of 17. Right, and then, so okay. currently, off-season mini camps and workouts have not started yet, yep. even though they're scheduled to start in April and May. Yep. And they're currently doing all of these things by Zoom and Skype business mm-hmm. calls, currently. Um, so, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens in July, but I wonder what they're going to do because the NBA, and yeah. also another good segue to that, the NBA is also doing... They have a very unorthodox plan for this. God, the playoffs. Uh, it's going to be the interesting. It's going to be so it's weird. It's going to be interesting. The NBA is going to start, If for those of you that don't know, at the end of July, they're going to head out to <clears throat> Walt Disney World Resort Woo! and ESPN Studios gonna out there. They're going to go hang out with Mickey. They're going to go hang out with Mickey. And they're going to have a play-in tournament for the 22 top teams mm-hmm. uh, that are currently left as of the end of the NBA season back in the middle of March. Yeah. Once uh, Which Rudy is, Gobert got, was uh, tested positive for Corona, oh, um, was the final straw. That That's a big straw. That was a big straw. And, you know, um, this just, it also just shows, you know, how serious this can be and how we do look at these athletes as role models yep. and stuff. Because you remember that interview with Gobert. Gobert really did... A yeah. bad thing. Yeah, he, he. I mean, he made fun of the virus, and then he and he, then he, he touched, touched all the all microphones the and started. He's coughing you know, everywhere. Yeah, and he's just like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, you and then the next day it. he tests for coronavirus, yeah. and then Donovan Mitchell, his yeah, teammate, his gets teammate it. gets it, and then the New Jersey Nets entire roster basically gets it, yep. including Kevin Durant, yeah, who wasn't even playing. Yeah, and, and he was injured too, so yeah. his immune system wasn't the best. Yeah, and they working. all got over it, sure. Yeah, and, and Gobert, kudos to him for coming out and being like, Look, I apologize. Apologized. I was immature. Yeah, I was, he know. didn't take it as seriously as he needed to. Right. But kudos to him. But yeah. people need to be they need to be careful with that stuff within reason, of course. Yeah. Um, so with with the NBA, they they have uh, it's up to from what I recall reading, it was it's twenty five staff. Yep. And Ross, uh, staff members, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, medical personnel, and also the twelve the, the people on your roster yeah. exactly. And they can uh, so twenty two teams, twenty five people. You know, you're looking at. Almost 500 people. I will say roughly. Quick math, yeah. Yeah, roughly 500 people just from the teams going to be at the Walt Disney World Resort, plus the chefs preparing food, yep. plus the trainers, plus the analysts and the broadcasters, yeah. the camera crew, the referees. There's a lot of people There's there. There's a lot of people still going to be there. Yep. And so what they've said is they'll test everybody coming in, and they're also going to test every player and staff member mm-hmm. every other day yeah. as well. It's necessary. It is necessary, um, especially if they're going to be quarantined e- in even closer proximity Yeah, because they're all going to be in that little hotel. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. It's a very potentially dangerous situation it's it's actually potentially very dangerous yeah. um you know it's, it's something that they're gonna have to be really careful with yeah. and i i'm glad they're doing it yeah i want to see the you nba know, finish they're gonna it'll, it'll be about eight weeks long they're gonna play a couple more season games yeah. to finish the seeding and then they'll yeah. go into a standard seven game series for the playoffs yep and there will the audience will be there because they'll have all the teams and after the first couple weeks they're going to allow each of the players to bring in um certain members of their family yeah. to come and watch uh, the WNBA is actually coming back for like 20 something games for their season yeah. i don't know where they're playing but i know that um they can come in with they can come in with their kids okay. and a nanny and after a couple weeks they can bring their significant other or plus one in or whatever okay um so they're going to be kind of following the same mold that the nba is doing so we'll see how it works. I'm interested to see it just because I'm I just wa- excited for the asterisk that's going to be LeBron's championship. I can't wait for the arguments that <laughs> LeBron's going to bitch yeah. about how his team didn't win. Yeah, because they had so much. The Lakers were the hottest team in the NBA. Oh, they were killing yeah, it right before yep. this co- this COVID crisis went yep. around in the middle of March. And so he's going to say, "Oh, our momentum was ruined yep. because of this," or. If the Lakers win the title, then all the other teams are going to say, "Oh, well, the old guys like LeBron, uh, Anthony you know, Davis, and Anth- you know, we and talked all, about this earlier. All these veterans, he's always injured. They he's gotten a three and a three half month break. Half, yeah, they had three, almost four months by the time uh-huh. they start um, that amount of time to rest. Yep. So, and also on top of that, all of all of those things for the NBA, provided the NFL and college football start on time oh, or even somewhere in football. there. If you add that, plus with whatever the MLB does and yeah. the NHL season, yeah. all of the major sports be on at the will be on time. at the exact same time. Yeah. Nobody is going to be making money this year yeah. in any of it. Everybody's losing Everybody's it. losing money this yeah. year. Everybody. I mean, it's not possible for them to make they money. They can't do it. It's not possible. There's only so many time slots that you have between ESPN, ABC, TNT, yeah. TBS, Let's NBC, Let's start putting Fox, things on Cartoon Network. 
<laughs> Honestly. <laughs> they could. Let's just start putting it in better than some of the crap they have on there yeah. now. So I don't know what's going to happen because that's going to be just a huge clusterfuck. Oh, yeah. It's going to be. Of, of television to watch. I will personally enjoy it as a sports fan. Yeah, I me too. Hope, I know? will be watching so much sports yeah. this upcoming fall. Yeah, because I, I don't want to watch the world championships cherry pit spinning yeah, competition anymore. Nobody wants anymore. to watch that anymore. You know? It no. was fun for a bit, but I I'm done with it. I want to watch some dunks. I want to watch some, you know... Yeah. I want to watch Harden, you know, pick apart defenses. I want to see Brady in a Buccaneers uniform Oh, yeah, get Gronk. sacked. Gronk. I want to see him toss a 50-yard touchdown to Gronk yeah. streaking down the middle of the field Maybe Vincent Postman Jackson oh, hitting yeah. up a left flag. Like... That team is going to be pretty cool. <sighs> that team's going to be nasty, dude. Um, oh, man. Their well, defense is kind of lacking. It is, but yeah. I, and I think they really address the offensive line and the halfback position. Well, they the have draft. to because Tom Brady's like a billion years he's old. Four, and, he's going to be so. 42 by the end yeah. of the season. So. No, he's older than that, isn't he? I think he's going to be 44. No, I think pretty sure he's Yeah, 42. I'm pretty sure he's older than that. Yeah, look, I'm look looking it up. It up looking it up. Why don't you just ask uh, Tom Brady age? Tom Brady age. Tom Brady age. 42 years old. Okay. Yeah, born August. So he'll be 43, but. Right, born August 3rd, okay. 1977. So, right. So, by the time the season His starts. His contract goes up at 44. That's right. what so it he'll is. Be, he got a two-year contract with the Bucks. Yeah. So, we, we'll see what happens, man. Um, Did you see that Drew Brees and him are going to be the oldest two quarterbacks to play each other? No. I yeah. Didn't. That's it's cool. the first time that 40-plus-year-old quarterbacks okay. have played each other. So, it doesn't count when Brett Favre was, like, 55? Yeah. In, no. Or, okay. No. He, I'm just kidding. He wasn't that old. Yeah. He was, like, 60. Yeah, 62. How many, that guy retired and unretired like three or four different times. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Um, he so was that good the, that he the had interesting, to retire. The interesting thing, and really the, the last thing before we wrap up that I wanted to bring up that we talked about, mm -hmm. for those of you that haven't heard, was uh, Kyrie Irving. Oh, Kyrie. Was our, our flat earther oh, friend. Oh, God, Kyrie. Decided that he would try to get the majority of his NBA brethren yeah. to sit out the remainder of the season with him. BP of the Players right. Association. Right, due, due, to, due to the BLM, yeah. the Black Lives Movement. Um, now, currently, like, you know, I, I get where he's coming from. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah, we want continued support for the Black Lives Matter movement. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Austin Rivers came out. Dude, and, and he did, he did something he great. Was, as, he was, as, he, as he was stating, he was saying, look, Kyrie Irving, as much as I support BLM, yeah. Yeah, Kyrie Irving makes ninety nine percent. He ma excuse me. He makes more money than ninety nine percent of the NBA players. Yep. Made. He was like, we need to be playing yeah. to get money to give to the BLM movement and yeah. to also feed our families, keep roofs yeah. over our head, and provide entertainment. Because to, not everybody makes thirty yeah. million a year. Yeah, not everybody does. You Believe know, there's, it or not, there's only a handful of players in the NBA that I mean, do think that. about the rookies too. You know, mm -hmm. the rookie yeah. contracts aren't that great. Your you know, unless you're Zion, who already signed yeah. his major sneaker deal yeah. with Jordan with Br Jordan's ja Morant, brand. You know, a or bunch ja Morant. of yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I. I I, you know, I, I see where Irving's coming from, but also his I, team is I not. I don't in, see where Irving's well, coming from. Well, so. <laughs> his, his team is his team is in content. His not in contention yeah, for NBA title. I wouldn't. I don't think. So what's funny is you know you hear Irving do that, and it doesn't seem to me in the past that he has been one of the more outspoken voices of the NBA Players Association no. in the past. Yeah. Even though he's one of their six vice presidents. Yeah. You know, you see guys like LeBron or Chris Paul yep. or even Carmelo Curry. Anthony, Curry, yeah. Dwayne Wade, yeah. you know, um, Jay, yeah, even Russell Westbrook. Yeah, you know, Westbrook. He tries. Of, he, he does He try. tries real hard. Um, so, you know, they... <laughs> It makes me. It makes me wonder: Is he by himself in that thought process, or are there more players that agree with him? Nobody's really spoken I up on it so far. Honestly, don't know how it, other NBA players can take him seriously. I, you know, the flat Earth uh, thing a, really does. He came get to out me. and said that he was. <laughs> he, he did not believe the Earth was round. How can you take anybody seriously after that? And then he's done this whole whiny thing with LeBron. In Cleveland, how he wanted a team of his own, and then he went to Boston, <laughs> and he had a team of his own, and then he couldn't handle it, and yeah. so he went to the Nets, and, and now he, he has Kevin Durant. At the begin and we'll see like, how long that lasts. Yeah, we'll, we'll give knows? him a year. And I'll so that's what year. I mean. Like, I don't think the other players of the NBA take him seriously. No. I honestly don't. I think he's there in his position because he's such a big name. Right. That he and he he's a talented throws, guy. Yeah, and he throws sure. such a fit. That they kind of were just like, take it, yeah. you know, just stop talking, just take this position. Yeah. And now he's put him in a really shitty situation. Yeah. Because he's talked about how all the players should sit out and they shouldn't play. 
because the loss of revenue and everything like that will sh- will bring a big light to the Black Lives Matter movement, sure. and that's the best way to do it, which I disagree with. I think the best way for that to continue is for players to be able to speak about it and for players to be able to show it on the national during during the national yeah, like, anthem, whether they during cross, the national they lock anthem, arms or they or they kneel or, or whatever, whatever they want to do, sure. and then post game interviews and pre game interviews, yeah. like that's the best way to you're, do it. You're because they're not realizing when these 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 games are broadcast live to millions of yeah. people, not not, not just, just in the, the United US. States, they're everywhere, all over the world. China, the NBA is in almost <laughs> ninety countries yeah. worldwide, not yeah. even just Europe and China. I'm talking yeah, it's in, everywhere in, Asia, in Oceania, like yeah, so. South America, yeah, Argentina has a huge player base. They do Brazil, yeah, like, Brazil. It's, I, I, I'm not sure. His, um, you know, I'm not sure his thought process, and I, I understand Austin Rivers' thought process. Austin a lot Rivers more. really stepped yeah. up. He did. He really did. And the ma- way he did it too was mm-hmm. really well done. Yeah, like his the his speech and everything that he talked about. Yeah, it was awesome. I wonder so. if he. I wonder if he spoke from the heart or he had. A Somebody media relations person. It. I, don't I can know. never tell with players yeah, anymore. It's, it's like it's like you can never tell with the players, politicians, um, TV show yeah. hosts. You never know. You anymore. never know. You know. You never know if it's them writing it or somebody else. It's, I feel like Austin Rivers wrote it. I hope he did. I would assume he did. I Do- hope he did. He and Doc Rivers Doc is, is a pretty well spoken yeah, and he's intelligent, really intelligent guy. And I haven't seen a ton of interviews with Austin. Yeah. But I would assume if his father is that that he is as he's well. He's a pretty good point guard. He seems like an intelligent he's, point guard. Yeah, so I, I mean, mean he's he's a good role player for the Rockets. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, and, they, I, and I think a lot of his game isn't really, you know, he doesn't really shoot the ball very well or anything like that. A lot of it's, you know, defensively and he leads the team a little bit while he's on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, he's, I mean, he's definitely the sixth man for their second yeah. unit. Absolutely. Yeah. So um Hey guys, so anyways, we are running out of time today. Um, we do want to, we do definitely want to thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you click the like and subscribe button. Uh, if you have any other comments or questions or topics you want us to go over. Let us know. Comment and let yeah. us know. And uh, we'll be back next week for sure. Yeah. Not sure on the topic yet since this was our inaugural episode. Yeah, our first episode. Hopefully. Uh, well, I look forward to it. Yeah, I like talking I about too. sports. I, me too. It's, it's always fun when you yeah. and I get to talk about it. It is. And, and rag on Gary a little yeah. bit. We'll bring, we'll bring Gary in for the next yeah, episode. We we'll can get talk Gary about in. golf and how Tiger Woods is the best golfer of oh, all time. Oh, by far the best golfer yeah. of all time. Better than Arnold Palmer. And, oh, way better. Yeah, better than Jack Nicholas. And, Jack Nicholas stood yeah. no And chance. better than Jack Nicholson. Yeah. As a golfer. Because <laughs> Gary knows how good of a golfer Jack Nicholson is. I mean, can we, just real quick, can we talk about how golf had to change their balls because of Tiger? That I don't think they had to do that to any other golfer. Really? Why don't you yeah. explain to the good folks at home yeah. uh, what happened with that? Well, they, they actually had a, ch- like, you know, balls started getting more technologically advanced, and sure. Tiger Woods was just ripping the ball, you know, yeah. hitting massive drives, you know, his putter was amazing, and so they actually had to change the rules to prevent really? Tiger from dominating. Now, did they ever have to do that because no. of Arnold Palmer? No, I don't or think Jack so. Nicholas. I don't think so. Yeah, it's very huh. interesting. I think that pretty much proves the debate that Tiger Woods is the best golfer of all time. Okay, well, you convinced me. Yeah, there you convinced we go. Me, and if you can convince me, it must be a fact. Yeah. So facts, yeah, facts. You only hear facts on <laughs> only uh, facts. this podcast. <laughs> Everybody, uh, I'm Johnny Blackburn. I'm Nick Alessandro. Uh, thanks for tuning in to There's No Crying in Podcasting. We'll see you next week.